Hello, you're listening to Sarah McCoy, and this is a special session of my podcast entitled Praying for My Kids. I've been a Bible teacher at Owasso First Assembly in Owasso, Oklahoma for over 40 years, and I love the way God's Word shows itself practical to today, time after time. Back in the year 2000, when my husband Tom and I had just four of our six children, I wrote an article about prayer. It was published a decade later in February 2010 in the Christian magazine, The Mennonite. That was volume 13, number two. I'd like to share that article now, then follow up with a few brief comments about what has happened since that time. Praying for my kids, how I wage spiritual warfare on their behalf. As a young girl in junior high Sunday school class, I recall being introduced to the shocking and tragic account in Ezekiel 22 of God's search throughout Israel for someone who might intercede on behalf of his wayward people. When no one could be found to stand in the gap before him, he poured out his judgment on sin. Later, as a college student, I was touched by Moses' prayer in Exodus 32 that spared the people destruction after they dabbled in idolatry. During nightly devotions with my husband, I read in Job 42 that God's anger at the three miserable comforters was assuaged when Job offered a burnt sacrifice and prayed for his friends at God's command. The message for me was clear. Praying for others works. I am the mother of four children ranging in age from six months to 10 years. Like most Christian parents, I am concerned about the effect a sinful world will have on their resolve to live a consistent Christian life that truly glorifies God. The Bible has reinforced to me what was already obvious. Believers have a responsibility to intercede for their kids. Most, at least occasionally, call their children's names in prayer. But what does it really take to reach God for those He has entrusted to us? Here are four keys I rely on for effective spiritual warfare on behalf of the most precious thing in the world to me. Number one, consistency. For me, hit and miss praying rarely does the job. Intercession is a spiritual discipline that requires motivation and dedication. Luke 18.1 says we are to pray always and not to lose heart. Just as you must water a garden or go to school consistently over an extended period of time for best results, So I pray for my kids day after day without stopping. Perhaps this is what Paul meant in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 when he wrote, Pray without ceasing. When a parent tirelessly goes before the father year upon year, the power unleashed on behalf of the child becomes a mighty, unstoppable force that pulls down strongholds and builds protection and victory. Number two, fervency. James 5.16 speaks of effectual, fervent prayer. Jesus himself prayed so earnestly before going to the cross that he sweat great drops of blood, Luke 22.44. Successful prayers must be heartfelt, sincere, determined, and serious. It is difficult for me to do spiritual battle in intercession if I am distracted, bored, in a hurry, or not fully convinced of the necessity of prayer. I have asked God to give me a burden for my children's spiritual welfare that will burn within my heart like a consuming fire and compel me to pray with zeal. I believe that results will be forthcoming. Number three, specificity. God, please keep your hand on my kids sounds nice, but it's not a directed, goal-oriented prayer. I think long-term. I want my three-year-old to marry the right person someday. I hope my first grader chooses the college or vocation that God has for him. 
And then there's moral chastity. In today's corrupt society, it is critical for me to begin praying about my children's sexual purity now, years before they reach adolescence. Remember that Jesus taught his disciples to say, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That was Matthew 6.13. Following are the specific prayers I plan to keep offering up for many more years. One, for my children to be protected from accidents, diseases, and people who would prey upon them. For my children to become Christians as soon as they're old enough to be responsible for making that decision. For my children to select friends that will encourage them to live for God. For my children to be morally pure and protected from premarital or extramarital sexual temptations. For my children to be protected from rebellion as they approach the teen years. For my children to be placed in the classrooms of the right teachers who can positively influence them. For my children to choose the right jobs, careers, college majors, or vocations. For my children to be producers in God's kingdom and not just takers. For the right mate for each of my children. For myself as a parent to be given wisdom to train, teach, and discipline my children properly. For myself as a parent to set a consistent and Christ-like example. Finally, praying together. My children seem to learn from the example I set. And prayer is no different. I need to pray for them privately, telling God intimate concerns and fears. However, it seems to encourage the kids to live the best they can when I make a daily habit of praying for them in front of them. Our best time is beside the front door before the school bus comes in the morning. The two older ones stand there holding lunch boxes and backpacks, and the three-year-old huddles with us still dressed in feet pajamas. We pray about the little girl in my son's class who says her folks won't take her to church and who checked a Bible out of the library. We pray about my daughter's standardized exams. We ask God to give the kids a chance to do good things for other people and be a light for him. We ask for protection for their daddy as he commutes to and from his job. Since my husband has already left for work when they wake up, he prays with them at night in their rooms before bed. Someday when they're grown and out of the house, I want them to have these memories burned into their hearts to strengthen them and spur them on to pray for themselves and their children. Even if your kids are already grown and on their own, it's not too late to begin consistent intercession before God on their behalf. I once heard Pastor John Hagee of Cornerstone Church in San Antonio, Texas, say on television, quote, The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. End quote. I encourage you not to waste even one minute regretting what should have been done in the past. Determine today to use the knowledge you now have to wage spiritual warfare for the souls of your children and or grandchildren. Time-consuming and sometimes exhausting? Yes. But I assure you that you will never make a better investment that pays higher dividends in your entire life. So that was in the year 2000. We had another child in the year 2002 and another in the year 2005. And I've been praying for those children every day ever since. But to follow up, about the time of the writing of that article when our oldest daughter was about 10 years old, she and I, in addition to the prayer before getting on the school bus, began to pray at night. So instead of my husband taking all four of the kids, I would take her as the only daughter. We used some prayer calendars, some for family and some for our church's denomination, and then added personal needs. And initially, the prayers were relatively short, particularly on my daughter's part. She would pray haltingly, and she often asked me what she should say. We discussed 
how the leaders that were listed on some of those prayer calendars each day needed wisdom and fresh vision and encouragement and physical health and leadership skills and favor with their constituencies. Slowly and almost imperceptibly at first, her prayers began to last longer and sound less mechanical. I was also delighted to notice how much she seemed to genuinely enjoy the time that we spent together each night. We had more opportunities for heart-to-heart -heart discussion, too, and I noticed definite spiritual growth in myself due to a more consistent prayer life. About five years went by, and our oldest daughter turned about 15, and she said, I think I'm ready to pray on my own now. So I let that go. And then when our little daughter got to be about 10 years of age, she and I began doing the same thing at night. And in her case, she was ready to give up our praying together and do her own praying when she was 17, which has only been just recently. And during that time, the Lord seemed to begin to call me to prayer in the morning before everyone got up on a consistent basis. That began about 15 years ago. Now, four of those six children are out of the house, and two are married, and one has a child. And I can tell you that the two oldest have already proven to be wonderful prayer warriors, and every one of those children are seriously serving God, and we have seen him intervene time and time again for needs that were spiritual and physical and mental. They have learned to rely on him for guidance and direction as they made decisions when their life came to a crossroads, and they've learned to care about other people, not just local needs, but global needs, as we prayed for things like the persecution of Christians in nations like North Korea, I can tell you that there was not one minute of all of that time that we set aside that was sometimes sacrificial that I would take back or that I regret. Pray for your children. Pray with your children, not just for a month or for a couple of years, but every day for all of your life. And you will see that that over time will begin a legacy that will be passed down from them to their children and hopefully to your great grandchildren. And God will spare them things and God will bless them with things and God will lead them to do things for his honor and glory that might never have happened if you had not been serious and consistent and faithful and convinced that he would hear you and do what he said. Let me just finish by saying how important my husband's role has been in all of this too. As he has mentored our sons at night with prayer and also with Bible reading year after year after year, and they have heard their dad pouring out his heart to God on their behalf and teaching them to pray, then they have become the men that we had hoped they would be. Try this and see it work. Blessings to you. And if this podcast has been helpful, pass it along.